A blessed day to everyone. Pastor Joseph E. Sapson here of the Blessed Word International Church in the Philippines. Welcome to TBN Bible Study in the Sky. And I thank God for this wonderful ministry that God is using in the spreading His gospel. But first, let us uh, join together in prayers and let us bow down and let us pray. Almighty and loving Father, thank you God for TBN. Thank you Lord God that you have given us this uh, ministry Lord God that we may be able Lord God to study your word and be able Lord God to live according to your will and your plan. Father be with us Lord God today as we study. Thank you Lord God in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. This year Christendom will be celebrating again the Holy Week and it is the most holy uh, part of the year where Christians are commemorating the death of the Lord Jesus Christ, His sacrifice for our salvation. But one Thursday night, He gathered His disciples in an upper room, and there He showed, and there He demonstrated His love for His disciples. And let us go first to the book of Romans, verses 6 to 8, then we will go to John chapter 13. And I will be reading from the New American Standard Bible. Verse 6. For while we were still helpless, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. For one will hardly die for a righteous man, though perhaps for a good man someone would dare even to die. But God demonstrates His own love towards us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Yes, Jesus Christ died for us while we were still sinners. And going to the book of John chapter 13, and this is where the Lord uh, instituted the Holy Communion. And we would be reading from chapter 13 starting from verse 1. Now, before the feast of the Passover, Jesus knowing that his hour had come, that he would depart out of this world to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And some other translation says, he showed them the full extent of his love. Love, love, love. That is what people are longing for. And every February, people are getting frantic celebrating at the month of love, as they say. But what is love? And how can we have this? How can we love? Now, in 1964, a British singing duo released a song entitled, A World Without Love. And it became a big hit. Just imagine the world without love. What do you think will happen to this earth? What do you think? Are we going to last a day or a second without love? Now, that song was followed by another song. And this time, this was two years later, in 1966, the old Warwick popularized uh, a Burt Bacharach song entitled, What the World Needs Now is Love. It also became a big hit. Now, a duo, a singing duo, a British duo saying, a world without love. But it was answered that what we need now is love. Yes, this day, especially as we celebrate Holy Week, we need to remind ourselves that it is all about love that we are saved. It is all about love that we are able to come before the Lord and say thank you and even say I love you to other people. The world is now in trouble. The pandemic is still causing difficult times for people. And some are losing their love and some are losing their faith in God. The World Health Organization and some leaders are tirelessly fighting the pandemic and vaccines are now available, praise God. Now we have hope, as they say. We now hope, have hope for a healthy world. But what a world can we have if it is without love? Now even the vaccine, we need to understand that even the vaccine is part of God's plan. The new developments these new developments are, no doubt, are part of God's work. 
to release His people from the curse of sin, which causes all our infirmities. So, as we celebrate the Holy Week this year, let us reflect on God and His love for His people. First, understand this. We need to understand that man has no power and ability to love. Sin has uh, removed from us that power. And because of sin that the devil has been imputed and been giving and been tempting the people with, we lost the power to love. But we don't have to worry about that because in 1 John 4.19, let us go immediately to that book. John wrote a wonderful passage here. And I would like to read just verse 19. We love because he first loved us. Here, John is saying, we love. In other words, he is saying that we have the power to love. We can love, yes, it is in, in us, within us, that power. And it is because Jesus Christ loved us first. But how did he demonstrate his love for us? And that's the title of our uh, study today, God's Demonstration of His Love. How did he do that? How can we love a people now? Remember, what the world needs now is love. Yes, that's true. And we can, and this world will be with love, not without love. It is with love simply because Jesus demonstrated his own kind of love towards us, that while we were yet sinners, God is love. We need not forget that. God is love. And from him, we can have the power of love. And God loves us because he is love. During the time of Moses, the people of God became stiff-necked, and God almost abandoned them. But in his grace and mercy and in his love to his people, after Moses spoke to him in Exodus 33, God promised, he promised Moses that his presence will be with him. Now in Exodus 33, 5, God spoke to Moses saying, I will let go with you, lest I will just destroy you. God cannot and will not uh, allow them, the, his people to be destroyed. But again, continuing the, the passage, we learn that after Moses spoke to him, God said, Moses, my presence will go with you and I will lead you and I will put you on a cliff and I will pass, cover your face, I will pass by you, and you will see my back. Brothers and sisters, remember, if you see God's back, you're on the right track, meaning God is ahead of you and you're following Him. Love is about following God. Love is about doing the will of God. Love is about uh, doing the example set by the Lord Jesus Christ. And now, this is a real proof that God's people are always in the heart of God. Though they were stiff-necked, God's mercy and God's love remained in them. And He demonstrated it by guiding them until they reached the Promised Land. And let us take a look at another, or some more passages that will show us the demonstration of God's love. John 3.16, this is a very popular verse. God demonstrated his own kind of blood towards us at his birth. We call it Christmas. Unfortunately, Christmas time has been uh, changed by the people. It is now focused on Christmas tree, on Santa Claus, and gift. But Christmas is all about God's love. The Bible says, and John wrote this, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but will have eternal life. Now take note that God initiated his coming. We did not ask him to come. We did not even pray for him to come. But in his love, he decided to come down that we might have life. Why? Because of sin, not only that we lost 
uh, the power of love, but we also lost our relationship with God. And so Jesus Christ came because he loved us so much. He came and whoever, whoever believes in him shall not perish, but will have eternal life. By this, in 1 John 4, 9, it says, By this, love is manifested in us, that God has sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. It was God, out of his love, sent his Son. It was his own decision. It was his own uh, will to come. And this is love. You don't want people to ask for it. Just show love. Love is putting the interests of others first. And that is exactly what God did to us. Seeing that we are doomed, bound to hell. Or he did not wait for us to repent. He came. Thinking, putting our interests first. And Paul wrote in Philippians chapter 2 verse 5, saying, Have this attitude in you. Have this attitude of Christ. So that we were able to uh, avail of that great love of the Lord. Now, what was the attitude of Jesus Christ when he came? You can just read the entire chapter 2 of the book of Philippians. But he, in that passage, I saw three essays. Number one, Jesus Christ took the form of a man and he came to save us. He became a servant to save us. He was selfless. Though he is God, he did not regard equality with God. And so that is selfless attitude. So love is selfless. It is not about the self. It is about the other person. It is about God. And when we put the interests of others and God first, God will take care of us and surely we will receive the reward of love. And second as is sacrificial. Love is sacrificial. And Jesus Christ came. He came not to create another group of people, but he came to save the people that were lost. Sacrificially, he gave his life that we might live. And the third is submissive. Jesus Christ came demonstrating his own kind of love in a very submissive attitude to God. He said in John 4, 34, My food is to do the will of my Father who sent me and to accomplish it. And in the garden, he was praying to God, Father, please take this cup out from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. Jesus lived a submissive life, a selfless life, and a sacrificial life. And that is love. And Paul was saying, have this attitude in you. You'll never go wrong if you will do that. God's love is what the world needs now. Yes, just imagine the world without love, without the love of God. You cannot even be sure whether you will be safe, right? Even inside your home. That's why at his birth, Christmas, take it as God's love for us. At the Lord's Supper, John 13 verse 1, John wrote, that Jesus showed them the full extent of his love. John 13, and I've read that already. John said that Jesus knowing that his hour had come. You see, if you love God and if you love God's people, you are not going to waste your precious moments, precious time. If God is saying, go Go and share my gospel. Don't wait for tomorrow, for next year. Time is the essence. And Jesus knows that. And that's why, knowing that his, the hour had come for him to go back to the Father, he, he loved them, the disciples, he loved them to the end. Yes, though he already knew that Peter will deny him, that Judas will betray him, and yet, because of his great love to his people, he loved even those that were going to betray him, Judas especially. And he served them and even washed their feet, saying, Peter, 
If I do not wash your feet, then you will know part with me. No, take a look at the saying of Jesus Christ. If I will not serve you, if I will not wash your feet, then you will not have part with me. And he was talking about compassion and love here. Peter, I want you to, to, to have part with me. I want you to partake of my divine nature. So I'm going to wash your feet. But first Peter said, no, no, you are not going to wash my feet. But Jesus said, you don't know what you're talking about. If I do not wash you, then you will have no part with me. Wow, what a kind of, what love Jesus showed to Peter. And especially to Judas. Jesus did not directly condemn him or point to him. He said, one of you will betray me. And of course, the disciples were evading the, uh, the statement of Jesus Christ. They were so defensive, saying, Surely not I, Lord. And Judas said, Surely not I, Lord. But Jesus said, Yes, it is you. With so much love and compassion, Jesus said, Yes, it is you. And Jesus was sad, even saying to Judas that it was Judas, because he loved even Judas. And so Jesus said, Judas, do now what you are supposed to do and do it quickly. And the Lord's Supper, which Jesus Christ instituted, is all about his love. He, he, he told them that this bread represents my body. This drink will be a symbol of my blood. And I'm going to allow my body to be broken that you might be made whole. And I'm going to shed my blood that you may be washed away from your sin. Oh, that is love. And remember, he was talking to sinners. He was talking to the people who were still sinners. And even now, his message still rings. And he say, he's saying, no matter who you are, I love you. And that is what the Lord is saying. And in the middle of this pandemic, God's love can heal. Yes, believe the word of God. Because in his love, Peter wrote, he bore our sorrows, he took all our infirmities, and he died on a tree. But by his wounds, we are healed. Oh, praise God for that. That is love. So therefore, Jesus loved even his enemies. At his crucifixion, the third demonstration of his love, God demonstrated his own kind of love towards us, that while we were yet sinners, he died for us. Oh yes, some people might be willing to die for a righteous person, but no one will dare to die for an unrighteous man, for a wicked man, for a condemned criminal. No one will take his place. But here, though we are sinners, though we are away from God, uh, the Bible says, Yet Jesus Christ came and he demonstrated his own kind of love towards us while we were yet sinners. What a wonderful love we have. He died not because he sinned, but because he took all our sorrows and sins on a tree so that we die to sin and live for righteousness and by his wounds. You have been healed. Jesus Christ demonstrated his own kind of blood towards us by taking all our sorrows, by taking all our pains, and dying on a tree, on a cross, that we might live. Hallelujah. What a wonderful demonstration of God's love. And in the book of Isaiah 53, 3 to 5, I'll just allow me to read. He was despised and rejected by men a man of sorrows and familiar with sufferings. Like one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised as we esteemed him not. Surely he took up our infirmities and carried our sorrows, yet we considered him stricken by God, smitten by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds we are healed. Isaiah 53, 3-5. to 5. 
And here we can see that foremost number one in the mind of Jesus Christ was his love for mankind. Yes, it was so painful, but he took all the pains. He took all the beatings. He even took death for us. And that is love. And just before he gave his last breath, he looked down to his people from the cross and said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they're doing. And that is love. Forgiving people is about love. And when God forgave us, it was his own demonstration of his own kind of love towards us. And this is God's utmost expression of his love, dying for us, forgiving us, and loving us even when we were still sinners. He gave us his son. We despised him and nailed him to the cross. Yet, he loved us. He forgave us and he healed us. The virus is still causing people to get uh, to be sick and die. But fear not. We can always come unto the Lord and ask for His mercy and grace and love. And surely He will grant us His love. His love that will cover a mul multitude of sin. The love that it can even heal our sickness. God is love. And he loves us. Why? Because we are the apple of his eye. Praise God. We are the love of God's heart. And he will not allow harm to touch us. Because of his love, anyone who touches us is touching the apple of his eye. Zechariah 2.8 For thus saith the Lord of hosts, After the glory hath he sent me unto the nations which is called you, for he that touches you, touches the apple of his eye. Now this idiom, the apple of his eye, is a wonderful description of how God loved us and treat us. And especially those who follow his commandments and his words. And this phrase, apple of the eye, occurs several times in the Bible. You can go to Deuteronomy 32.10, you can go to Psalm 17.8. You can go to Proverbs 7, 2, and so on and so forth. You see, the apple of the eye refers to the small man in the eye. It refers to the pupil. You gaze, you look straight to the eye of the other person, and you will see your own image. And two things that I would like you to understand. Every time we look at on the eyes of Jesus Christ, every time we focus on God, you look at his eyes and you will see a reflection of your own image. Second, that would mean that if you see your image in the eyes and the pupils of God, then you will know that God is very much focused on you. You see your image in the eyes of God, that means God is looking at you, concerned about you. And when he looks at you, and this is the big thing, and when he looks at you at your eyes, then he also will see his image. We are the, in the image of God. And so this apple of the eye would mean the little man in the eye. Yes, it reflects the image before that person. And look at someone in the eye, you will see your own image. And if, he's, if God looks at our eyes, he will see his own image. The question is, are we focused on God? Are we looking unto God this time? Are we seeking his love? God is looking at us. Now look at him. And this you can be assured that if he looks at you, he will see his image in you. Therefore, God treats his own people as the little man who he regards right at the center of his eyes, very focused. God is very focused on his people that he loves. Brothers and sisters, Holy Week is God's demonstration of his own kind of love towards us. Have confidence that even in the days of difficulty, now, in the days of trouble, call upon God in the day of your trouble 
and God will say, yes, I am coming and I will rescue you. Psalm 50 verse 15 from the NASB, call upon me in the day of trouble, I shall rescue you and you will honor me. Hallelujah. And because we are the apple of his eyes, we are the people are so vulnerable and God knows that. And he knows that he, we needed protection. So therefore he comes to us to cover us, to shield us with his love. God is a loving God. And he gave his people his tender loving care and loving affection. And his, in his love, God provided complete protection for his people. We are the focus of God's eyes because of his love. This year, as we celebrate the Holy Week, remember this, no one can touch you because you are, we are the apple of God's eye. And that would mean God so cherishes us. He loves us so much that he, he would look at us as his very precious possession. After all, we are God's masterpiece. And he gave us his son while we were yet sinners. And before we close, let me go back to the book of Brahmas once again and read to you that we may not forget that part where he said, verse 6, chapter 5 to 8. For while we were yet helpless, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. For one will hardly die for a righteous man. Though perhaps for a good man someone would dare even to die. But God demonstrates his own love towards us. And that while we were yet sinners, he died for us. He demonstrates, meaning he demonstrated it before, he is demonstrating it now, and he will continue demonstrating his love towards us. And if we are covered by the love of Jesus Christ, no one can touch us. And remember, Jesus carried the cross for you and me, for us to live and enjoy eternal life. He carried the cross and died on the cross, demonstrating his own kind of love, the agape love towards you while we were yet sinners. Hmm. He did not wait for us to repent. He did not wait for us to say, Lord, I am sorry. No. He initiated love and he demonstrated it even, even before we know about the meaning of love. And remember this, we love because first God first loved us and God is love and he loves us. Remember this, you are love. As you celebrate the Holy Week, remember it is all about God's love. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for we know God that you love us so much. And I pray Lord God that you cover us with your love, that we may not sin again, that we may not get sick. Father, thank you, God, for your great love towards us. And now, Lord, we surrender our lives to you, and we want to let you know, O oh God, that we love you. Thank you, Lord God, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Now, this is TBN Bible Study in the Sky. Thank you for joining us today, and may the Lord bless you, and may his love shine so bright in your life. God bless you all. Thank you.